These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is a day to remember. Each year, from generation to generation, you must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. This is a law for all time. Oh, yeah. Tonight is a very special night. We are gathered here tonight on a day that is First Friday. For me, that's really special. It's also Good Friday. It's also the first night of Passover. And somewhere out there in the sky is a blood red moon rising. We just sang about heaven and earth collide. The times and seasons of our lives are colliding tonight. There is a cohesion of times and seasons that doesn't happen very often. Last year, that blood red moon showed up at Passover and Feast of Tabernacles, and it's doing it again this year. Now, those who watch these kinds of things say that the next time that's going to happen is like 2,500 years into the future. And I understand that the last time that that happened was 1948. Did anything phenomenal happen in 1948? Oh, yes. The promises of all the prophets when God said, I scattered you, I will regather you. And the state of Israel was formed, reformed in 1948. God gave us signs and wonders on the very first page of our Bible. He said, I'm placing the sun, moon, stars in the universe as seasons and times and and they'll tell you remember that even at the appearing of Jesus I call him Yeshua that's his Hebrew name so you'll hear Yeshua and Jesus uh, interchangeably especially if you come to first Friday with us because his Hebrew name Yeshua means he will save his people when the angel appeared to that young Jewish girl 2,000 years ago uh, because she spoke Hebrew he spoke Hebrew to her go figure And so he said, call his name Yeshua because he will save his people. And he's been doing that ever since. The miracle, yeah, the miracle of that Passover that we're going to walk through tonight very quickly The miracle of that Passover 2,000 years ago was that salvation that God said, I'm going to save my people Israel. At that Passover, boom, he opened it up to all the nations of the earth. And a great miracle happened there. I have good news for you tonight. You don't have to be Jewish to walk into the salvation of God. Amen. Tonight is one of the the three, what we call pilgrim feasts. There are three times when the Lord said to Israel, I want you to leave everything you're doing, leave your shops, leave everything, come on up to Jerusalem, 
and worship me there. Why? Because it's good for us to gather. It's good for us to worship together. But you know, he calls us to gather together because, are you ready? He's got something to say. Go figure. Go figure. The Lord, you know, I, I, sometimes I think we're so busy doing all of our stuff and man, we got to, okay, and then we're overlapping this with that and then the video comes up and, and then we're doing this and, and God's going, okay, I can wait. <laughs> listening, listening is one of the things that he calls us together to do. So tonight I pray that as we walk through this Passover Seder, as we walk through every Jewish home tonight, all around the world are walking through these elements in the same order that we're going to look at them. And there are mysteries hidden. There are secrets kept on this table that have been being revealed to those who have eyes that see and ears that here. And I pray that we are a people, especially in this time, when it seems like the world is turning upside down. Am, am I right or am I wrong? Is this a season now when people are calling evil good? Are there those who are calling good evil? I mean, on a scale that we've never seen or heard in, in my lifetime. Are we not living in a time when there, there are wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and tsunamis in, in unprecedented numbers and it continues to just roll and roll and roll? Is it just me or is, or is that something that's actually happening? Yeshua said in Matthew 24, you watch because they were saying, all right, you're saying you're going away, but what's going to be the sign of your coming? And he said, just watch for all this stuff. It's, good. it's birth pains. It's birth pains. I believe that we are in the season of birth pains. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done, Lord, in Jacksonville, Florida. As it is in heaven. He's giving us our daily bread and he's set a table. So here on our table, we have some unusual elements. Um, I think these are... Yeah, they're plastic. <laughs> Shouldn't have done that. <clears throat> but we have some unusual things here on our plate. And if we have that graphic, I think we can see them on our Seder plate. I know we took a picture of it, so we got it there. There are some unusual things. We've, we've got some horseradish. Not my favorite. We've got some chopped apples and some... Uh, cinnamon and honey, I, I do like that. There's some of this strange flat bread. My grandmother used to eat this stuff by the box and I never could understand why she liked it so much, but Russian Jewish gal. Uh, we have some uh, green parsley here. We've got a little bit of water and I know that there's salt in there. We have a green vegetable. And we've got a very dry bone. This is uh, from a lamb, a lamb shank. And then we also have some matzah. We've got uh, a cup and we have very kosher wine. I knew since it was kosher that nobody would be offended. This is, this is like, we call this Jewish cough syrup. It, I mean, this is not the kind of stuff that you enjoy sitting down uh, with a meal. If, of course, unless you're Baptist, then you wouldn't do that anyway. <laughs> and I love Baptists. I got into a fishing boat, believe this or not, Pastor Stovall, I got into a fishing boat with a Baptist. See what happens, you Jews, when you don't read a Bible? I don't think his name was John, but I got into a fishing boat with a Baptist. And he wouldn't let me out of that boat until I prayed. So it, anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Now, our cup here, this cup of wine, will be used four times tonight. Why? Because it represents four 
promises. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring you out of captivity. That's promise number one. He said, I'll free you from being slaves. I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. That's a really important one. And I will take you to be my people, and I will be your God. So as we start our Seder tonight, I'll take the cup and remember, in every Jewish home around the world, in the exact order that we're doing it, with the same words, except some of my explanation, they are doing this every home. But there are promises being made. Tonight's message is called The Promise. And as you saw from that awesome video that our friends here produced, the promise is not just a bunch of words. The promise is a man, Amen. our Messiah, Amen. King of the Jews, Son of God, yeah. Son of David, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So this first cup is called the cup of sanctification. And we see in Luke chapter 22, Yeshua and his disciples, they're sitting around the table. And he says to them, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he lifted up the cup and he probably declared these words, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, borei pri hagafen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Hmm. Next in our Seder is traditionally is called urchatz. It's the washing of hands. Now, if you go into any kosher restaurant, in, particularly in Jerusalem, but all over Tel Aviv as well, you don't have to find the restroom to wash because as soon as you go through the front door, there's a basin there. That usually the water's running. You don't even have to turn it on. And there's towels. Washing of hands is a traditional thing. And Jesus certainly observed that. But in that day, what would happen was slaves or servants would come out to, to your gathering with your family and friends around the table. And they'd have a bowl, a pitcher of water, and towels, and they'd present the bowl, you'd put your hands over it, water from the pitcher's poured, they hand you a towel. Now, at this Seder that we're talking about 2,000 years ago, Jesus the Messiah did something very unusual. He got up from his place of honor, he wrapped a towel around his waist, and he went one by one by one to all of his disciples, including Judas, and he washed their feet. Now you remember the story, Peter is complaining by the time Jesus gets to Peter, Peter's like, no, Lord, no, you can't wash my feet. That's a job for servants or people outside the covenant. And Jesus says to him, unless I wash you, you have no part of me. I believe he was referring to something he was just about to do in the washing of all of our lives with his blood. And by that, he was serving us in the highest way. The next part of our Seder is this parsley. It, it has a couple of meanings for us, and if we can put that graphic up there, that beautiful graphic that you did, that's lovely. You see the green, now, it's green because it reminds us that Passover happens in the spring. This is the first month of the year according to the scriptures. Not January, and even though the rabbis call Rosh Hashanah New Year in September, October, wherever it lands, the first month according to the scriptures is Nisan. It has nothing to do with cars, but it is the first month according to the scriptures. And so we have this green vegetable that reminds us Passover happens in the spring. But we do something strange with it. We dip it in this salt water. And you see, can we get that graphic back up, guys? The graphic that you just had? Yeah. See that tear that's forming 
just under his or her either. We dip this in the salt water because we want to remember that we were once enslaved. We were once held captive and we remember the saltiness of our tears as we wept, crying out to God for freedom. In John 8, 32, 34, Yeshua said to them, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But they said to him, we're Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves of anyone. Are you kidding me? They didn't read their own Bible. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus says to them, I tell you the truth. Whoever sins is a slave to that sin. What we're doing is tying the first Passover of 3,500 years ago, almost exactly, to the Passover 2,000 years ago. And tonight we're receiving the fullness of those promises. At our table, there'll be a, a young child who asks four questions, and as a result of those four questions, we'll continue our Seder. But that comes from Exodus chapter 12, when, when uh, the Lord said to Moses, and when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean? What are you doing with all this strange stuff? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over our houses. That's where the name Passover comes from. He said, I will pass over your house. Now he said, I will go through the land. Not an angel, not a seraph, not the angel of death, not something from Hollywood. I myself will pass through the land. But when I see the blood, I will pass over your house. And so that night, 3,500 years ago, there was a great outcry and a great mourning because all of the firstborn of Pharaoh and Egypt and their flocks and herds died that night when the angel passed over. Now we have some matzah on the table. It's strange. It, it doesn't, you know, this is not like... Um, your, your favorite uh, Italian loaf that you smear butter on. And I don't think even smearing butter helps the taste of this, actually. <laughs> I could use this for packing cassettes and CDs uh, for shipping. <laughs> it's because it has no yeast. And Paul the Apostle told us that uh, get rid of all the yeast because it puffs up. Well, this bread is very, very humble. But if you hold it up to the light, you notice that it's pierced. This bread has holes in it. It's striped. And it's bruised. Doesn't that remind you of something? How about Isaiah 53, verse 5? But he was pierced because of our transgressions. He was crushed because of our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Amen. This is the bread that would have been used not only at that first Passover 3,500 years ago, but also 2,000 years ago. 1 Corinthians 5, 6, and 7, the Apostle Paul says, don't you know that a little yeast works through the whole batch? Get rid of the old yeast that you may be a new batch without yeast, for Messiah, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, because he's been sacrificed, Paul the Apostle says, let us celebrate the feast. And that's what we're doing tonight. And at that supper, Jesus would have lifted up the bread and broke it, and he would have said these words, Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You bring forth bread out of the earth. Remember where he was born? What city? Bethlehem. Do you know it in the Hebrew? Bethlehem, house of bread. That's where he was born. Amen.
One, one other little fact, too, that I'll just throw in here. Bethlehem, remember the, from the scriptures, it says that when the, when the angels were revealed and, the, and that star hung over that, that little town, it's not very far from Bethlehem. It's not a very far walk from there to Jerusalem. Do you know what they raised? It says that the shepherds were in the fields tending their flocks. Bethlehem is known very specifically for being a place where a certain animal is raised for the temple. The sacrificial lambs were raised in Bethlehem and it was the hour that he was giving his life that those Bethlehem lambs were being brought up to the temple and being sacrificed the same hour. God has a plan. I'm telling you, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, tonight, if you hear nothing else, I want you to hear this. God loves you. He has a plan. He knows it all. He's already got the answer working on your behalf. He does. There's also this little... It's called a matzotash, and it holds pieces of matzah inside. There's, there's three of them. Now something very unusual happens. And Jesus would have done the same thing. Every Jewish home, remember, tonight does this. They reach into the bag and pull out the middle sheet. It's separated from the other two. It's broken. It's wrapped in a white linen cloth. It gets better. Listen, this is not messianic. I'm telling you, this is on every Jewish Seder table tonight all around the world. Mysteries are hidden on this table. But for those who have eyes and ears, there is revelation that means eternal life. This piece that's broken, wrapped, it's hidden away. It's given a new name. It's called Afikomen, which means I will come again. (laughs) Oh yeah, this is about to get really good. (laughs) So if you, you ask some of your Jewish friends, why three sheets? They might say, well, it represents the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Uh, they might say it represents the three different levels of the, of the um, priesthood. Okay. But why is the middle one removed, broken, buried, gets a new name, comes back at the end, Uh, uh, It's because we've always done it that way. Okay, all right. I'll take that for now, but it's not going to satisfy me forever. We have here on our table bitter herbs. And I told you before, it's not my favorite, but it reminds us of the bitterness of slavery So you're supposed to dip in the bowl and take enough to make you tear. Now, in Mark 14, we see what was happening here. Jesus says, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me out of this bowl of bitterness, one who dips his bread in the bowl of bitterness. Is there anything more bitter than being betrayed by someone that you love? I've pastored a long time. 
and to try and minister to people who have been betrayed by someone that they trusted, that they loved. And it was at this point in the Seder when Yeshua said, one of you will betray me. The one who dips in the bowl, he dipped into the bitterness of those herbs. At that moment, Judas took a piece, dipped in the bowl. I don't know what he was distracted maybe when Jesus said those words, but right after he said those words, Judas dips in the bowl. The scriptures say that the devil entered him at that point, and Jesus said, what you were about to do, do it quickly. The bitterness of betrayal. But I want you to know that on this table, there are not only mysteries, there is healing in this table. There's healing in this cup. There's healing for the tears. There's healing for the, the bitterness of, of betrayal. There's, there's freedom here. We also have a mixture on the table of these beautiful um, chopped apples. And it's mixed with honey and cinnamon. And it's to remind us that at one point in our lives, we made bricks for Pharaoh. 400 years, our Jewish people were enslaved and made cities for Pharaoh, probably built the pyramids and the Sphinx and all the rest on the backs of Jewish slaves. And so we have this as a part of our Seder to remind us once we were in bondage, but now we're free men. I've been in bondage to sin. I've been in bondage to the flesh. I've been in bondage to the desires of my own way. But on March 26th of 1977, Jesus set me free. I will never go back there. Ain't going back there. We come now to our second cup. It's the cup of plagues, and so we don't drink from it. It's the cup of plagues or the cup of judgment, but we diminish our cup. Now, you know about the plagues, but did you know that these plagues were judgments not against Egyptians, but against the gods that they served? They worshiped the Nile as the giver of life, and so God turned it blood, and everything in it died. They worshiped the sun as the creator god, Ra, and so he blotted it out of the sky. He's judging all the gods of Egypt. They said that frogs were the god of fertility, and so he gave them so many frogs that they, they couldn't even walk without squishing their gods and so on, until we got to the God of Pharaoh, who said he was descended from the God Ra, and his son was descended from, from the son as well. And so he took from them their firstborn and showed that he is God of all. There is no other. So we diminish this cup and I'll repeat these, these uh, plagues, and you can say them with me because there's a revelation here as well. We dip our finger in and repeat the names of these plagues, and as I say them, say them with me. Blood. Blood. Frogs. Frogs. Lice. Lice. Beasts. Beasts. Cattle disease. Cattle. Boils. Locusts, darkness, death of the firstborn, cancer, heart disease, depression, addictions, anger, suicide, death, disease. And you can name anything else that the enemy has sent to steal, kill, and destroy. No plague. Say no plague. No plague comes near my tent. Oh, yeah. You see, there's a, a mystery here 
in order to be separated from the plagues, you have to have blood. Leviticus 17, 11, God said, I have given you blood on the altar for an atonement for your sins. Without blood, Hebrew says, there is no forgiveness of sin. It goes all the way back to the very first chapters of Genesis, when Adam and Eve walked with God in the coolness of the day, and then they sinned, and they said to Satan, we believe you, we don't believe God. It says in my Bible that after the little conversation, God slew animals and he wrapped them in them. He wrapped Adam and Eve in those skins and sent them out of the garden. Why? Because they needed blood as a covering. They needed blood as an atonement because sin separates us from God. And it's the same today. We are eternally separated from the blessing and the favor of God if we don't have blood. But I have good news for you tonight. It's within reach. It's within reach. It's as close as the confession in your mouth. And in a moment, you'll have an opportunity to make that confession. The Passover lamb is also described in our Seder, made reference to this lamb and to the one who John the Baptist said, behold, the lamb of God who takes this away the sin of the world. 3,500 years, God told Moses, tell them all, go through their flocks and herds, take one, a male, a year old, and it has to be perfect. So on the 10th day of Nisan, pick that lamb, bring it into your house. Watch it. Make sure it doesn't have a blind eye. Make sure there's no tear on its ear. Make sure that its, its wool is, is perfect. It's not lame. It doesn't limp. I need a perfect sacrifice. And then, after four days, take it out and offer it to the Lord and put the blood on the doorposts and the lentils. What we call Palm Sunday was four days before the Passover. And Jesus rode into Jerusalem. Why? For four days, the high priest and the people examined him. And even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. He was observed, found to be perfect. There is so much in this Seder. But now, I have to come to the Afikomen. In a traditional Seder, there would still be a telling of the whole story of Passover. And then there's a whole sit-down meal, and it becomes like almost like a Thanksgiving thing. I mean, it is, whoo. Bring on the dog, man. There is seven-course meal, and it's grandma is at her best. But we didn't prepare that for you tonight because we didn't know how many to prepare for. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have done that. And so your Bible says, after supper, Yeshua took the bread. Well, what bread? There's a lot of bread here on the table. There's these pieces. There's, there's this piece. There's a couple in here. No. He took this bread. That was redeemed. Are you sitting down? With pieces of silver. In every Jewish home around the world. This is buried and it's hidden. And you can't complete your Seder until one of the children goes and finds it. And you know their motivation for finding it? Grandpa has a pocket full of silver coins. And he buys back the hidden piece with pieces of silver. Hello. He took the bread. Every eye was on him. What is he going to do? 
he unwrapped it. And he said, this bread, the one that was removed from the other two, this one that is striped and pierced and bruised, this one who was buried and hidden away and comes back at the end of the meal, this is my body given for you. Share this amongst yourselves. And if that wasn't enough, he took the cup, the third cup. This one also has a name. It's called the cup of salvation. And he said, this cup, this is my blood of the new covenant. I am the salvation of God. Remember the promise with the third cup? I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. And Jesus said, I am the outstretched arm of God. And so eat of me and drink of me and you will have life. There's one more promise. He said, I will come again. I believe that we're in that season. The signs are all around us. There's a blood moon over us tonight. At the third feast this year, the last one of the year, Tabernacles, is coming another blood moon. What does it mean? I believe it means that God is saying, hello, can I have your attention, please? I'm about to do something. John said this, I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and he makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire and on his head are many crowns. He's dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. The armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written. And let me have the worship team. King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Friends, the secret, the mystery that's hidden in this table is this. A king is coming. A king is coming. A king is coming. Are you ready for the coming of a king? Are you ready for the coming of a king? King of all kings. Lord of all lords, the mighty one of Israel, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Are you ready for the coming of a king? Oh, blow a trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain for the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is Hallelujah. I want to share this table with you. But before we do that, I have to ask you a question. Go ahead and sit for just a moment. Let me ask you this. Did you see something in this table that you've never seen before? Did you see someone in this table that you've never seen before? 
if you're Jewish tonight, I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus. I assure you with every assurance, this Jesus of Nazareth, this Yeshua, he is our promised Messiah. He is that middle matzah. And he's the promised one of Israel. And if you'll put your trust in him, you will be saved. I guarantee it. I guarantee it on the resurrection of our Messiah. It is a historical fact. He was raised from the dead on the third day on the Feast of First Fruits. This Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. It's Easter. It is the Feast of First Fruits. It is Resurrection Day. He is your Messiah. And I already pulled the plug on the rest of you. You don't have to be Jewish to believe in the Jewish Messiah. No, you don't have to. So let me ask you this question real quick. Do you know him? Do you know him? Are you ready for his appearing? He's coming. He's coming on a white horse. He is coming to reign and rule. He's not coming to Jacksonville. He's coming to Jerusalem. (laughs) No matter, all right, I won't even go there. (laughs) Are you prepared? Is there blood on your doorposts of your heart? Have you been separated from sin and death? Have you made him, Jesus, Yeshua, Lord of your life? He is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins and covers us from the coming judgment. If you have never asked Jesus to be Lord of your life, tonight is the night. If you'll bow your heads with me tonight, everyone around this room, And if you say, Paul, pray for me, I'm not sure. I don't know that Jesus is Lord of my life. I'm not sure that my name is written in the book of life. I'm I'm just not sure. Pray for me. Would you lift your hand? I want to pray for you tonight. All around this auditorium, lift your hand. Yes, yes. Who else? Just lift your hand. I want to pray with you. Yes, 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 yes. Who else? Before we pray. Yes. Anyone else? All across the room tonight. Come on, just lift your hand. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Paul, I've seen it and I've heard it, but I have walked away. I've walked away from the grace. I don't pray. I don't read my Bible. I don't gather with the saints anymore. I'm away from God and I want to come back home. If that's you tonight, come on, wave your hand at me. I want to pray for you tonight. Yes, yes. Who else? All across the auditorium tonight. I want to pray with you. Prayer is not salvation, but it is the invitation for the presence of God, for the Son of God to come in and be Lord of your life. My Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I want to pray with you. I'm going to ask you to pray with me, those of you who lifted your hands, and the rest of us, we're going to pray with you right now. All of you, would you follow me in this prayer, and you can encourage those who lifted their hands to pray tonight. Pray this right out loud. Make this as much as you can, faith of your heart. God will hear your voice, and he will do what you ask him to do. It's his plan for you. It's his purpose for you on this Passover, Good Friday, this night. Let's pray. If you lifted your hands and all the rest, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I come to you now because I need you. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that you've raised him from the dead. For me, I ask you now to forgive me, to cleanse me, 
here's my life. Use it for your glory. I give you thanks and praise. My life is now yours and your life is mine because I asked in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, if you prayed with me tonight, we have a special invitation for you just after the service, which is just about to close. But I want to make sure that we celebrate this third cup and this afikoman together as we begin this resurrection celebration Passover weekend here at Celebration. When you came in, I hope you picked up a cup. Now, if you'll, on the top, kind of hidden, if you remove the top, there is a little wafer under there. It probably tastes just like this stuff up here, but it's all that we could get on that top. But now that you've prayed, many of you have prayed to receive Jesus, Yeshua, now we can eat and drink this together and it's not condemnation to us, it's life eternal. And so once more, after supper, he took the bread, not just any bread, the one that was separated, broken, wrapped, buried, hidden, purchased back with silver coins. He said, this is my body, which is given for you. Receive the body of our Messiah. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. You may receive the Lord. In the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, this cup, this cup of salvation, with the promise, I will redeem you with an outstretched arm. This is my blood, which I am about to pour out for you for your covering, for the remission of your sins as an atonement. I'll wrap you in my blood and no curse can touch you. As you take this tonight, I add my faith with yours. Any curse, any disaster, disease, sickness, blindness, there is healing, there's restoration, there's resurrection in this cup. And he lifted it up and he said, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You bring forth the fruit of the vine. Drink of him who is life eternal. <laughs>